Hi ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. My name's Ian Walton and I'm here to present Colour in Your Life in the UK. We all know an artist or creative individual out there, often a family member or a best friend. So come along with us on this wonderful adventure of inspiration, creativity and positivity to meet and watch some of the most talented and creative people in the country. And let us put some colour in your life. Hi folks and welcome to another episode of Colour in Your Life UK. We are at Barron's Court in central London today, so apologies for the uh, road noise that you may hear. But uh, we're here to meet an incredibly talented artist by the name of Max Bacchanello. Max, it's wonderful to meet you. Hi there, Finally. you too. Um, I became aware of uh, Max's work about seven years ago when I saw an exhibition at a gallery in Oswestry uh, in Shropshire. And uh, since then, Max has really come on um, in leaps and bounds and we're down here now obviously in London and we're going to do something incredibly exciting today and it's a first for Colour in Your Life and that is filming with a live model. Yep, yep, so I'm going to be uh, teaching the site size technique uh, which is something I learned in Florence in Italy and uh, my lovely model Chloe will be sitting for us and we'll be doing a painting from start to finish on the site size technique. Absolutely fantastic. Again, I think it's a first for Colour in Your Life. We're really looking forward to having a fantastic day with Max and seeing some tremendous painting. And I've got my little studio assistant here, Zaza. Yes, <laughs> there are, uh, there are <laughs> two dogs around the place, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, you may see them appear in shot at some point. And uh, this is uh, Zaza. <laughs> And um, off shot we have uh, Kiska, Kiska. Who's asleep in a bed. So uh, we hope you enjoy everything today. Well, Max, uh, we're about to make a start. Uh, yeah, I think you're going to start there with uh, with charcoal, what you uh, mentioned earlier on. Uh, yeah, I'm starting with a graded charcoal, uh, which I'm just going to sketch out Chloe onto the canvas um, before I use paint. So we're going to start with a plumb line, which I place on the top of Chloe's head to lay to block in the top of her head, which will be about here. Um, I'm also I'm going to put a anchor line down the middle, which we do like this. The advantage of using the anchor line is I can put all my points on it, points of reference. So. As such, so I've got the point of reference of the top of the head, which I'm just going to check. And now I go for the bottom of the chin, which comes in here. Once I've locked in the top of the head and the bottom of the chin, I will then lock in the eyes. So I go for the center of the eyes, which will be just here. And I'm just going to, Chloe, if you could just move a little bit that way. Yeah, that's great. And now I'm just going to lock in the eyebrows. Which will come here. And lock in the mouth. And then bottom of nose. That's the next one. And then I use the plumb line just to measure my widths. So I'm using it in between my thumbs. Measure, and I always come back to the same spot. And just walk forwards, remember where that was. Put a mark. And again, I'm using the plumb line in between the thumbs. That's to get the width of Chloe. So come there. I'm just going to get the width of the head. So really quite a precise technique that you're, uh, you're using. Yeah, it's very important to uh, double check all of these measurements at the beginning because it just makes it easier uh, later on. Because uh, if you get these points wrong, 
then you're going to be moving around the paint, which is a lot harder. Uh, when you knock it in with charcoal, it's so easy to you know, move, a bit, move a tiny mark of charcoal rather than when you've put the paint down. At least I find it is. So I'm just going to get the whip to the side of the head. So it's very much about making re relatively precise marks. And uh, what, what sort of length of time would you normally take to, uh, to sketch in with the charcoal? Um, it can vary anywhere between sort of half an hour and an hour. Uh, but I just, I'm trying to keep it sort of very geometric and sort of straight, simple, straight, simple lines. Um, I find that way with, when you, once you start putting curves and it gets a little bit too caught up and you can get caught in the detail. So I'm just keeping it nice and simple with straight lines. Straight line. And uh, normally you would normally you'd block in the shadow shapes, but on the setup today we don't actually have that many shadow shapes, so I'm just um, kind of blocking in the features rather than the shadow shapes. But under the chin here we do have a big shadow shape. So Max, um, obviously we've added uh, extra lighting today to, uh, to do the filming, but uh, how would you normally light this? Yes, so uh, I, I would, uh, I'd normally light it with a highlight of 45 degree angle coming down on the model um, and just a single light source uh, just to keep it simple and all the shadow tones the same. Whereas today we've got quite a few lights around so I'm sort of, I'm going to over hit the shadow tones ex like to imagine that we've just got the single light source. Um, That's tremendous, yeah. Yeah. So I'm just hitting in the ear now, just, just roughly plotting that in. I want to get the shoulder shape and then once I've done this, I'll spray it with fixative and uh, we can start with the paint. Wonderful. Well, it's coming on very quickly actually. Right, that's going to need a little bit to dry. There we go, and now ready for paint. So Max, you've, uh, you've put some uh, colour out on the, uh, on the palette there now. If you could just uh, run through uh, what you're going to use, that would be good. Uh, yep, yeah. so I'm using a lead white, a yellow ochre, uh, a light red, a vermilion, a transparent oxide, which I find is really good for the darks, a raw sienna, which I find is a good filling colour, and a burnt umber and an ivory black, right. which is a limited palette, and uh, that way you don't get too mixed up in colour when you're painting the portrait. I like to keep it minimal. Um, yeah, so I'm going to start by mixing some darks, some dark tones so I can knock in my darks, and then I'm going to knock in a couple of mid-tones and some lights. So I'm going to start by mixing those up. So I'll get my ivory black and I use my transparent oxide just with a bit of medium, and a bit of ochre. Let's get a nice, nice dark. So I'm just just hit the darks to start with. Good, yeah. yeah, that was something I was just uh, about to ask you about, actually. So, uh, putting in some of the darkest areas uh, of the portrait first. Uh, yeah, so that way it's easier to find your, uh, your tone or value. Uh, so if you hit your darkest darks, which is something constantly doing throughout the picture, throughout the painting even, uh, just so it helps uh, at the beginning if you just really hit, over hit that dark, because once you start to fill the painting with, with more colour, you'll realise that that dark isn't as dark as it seems. Something I've been saying to, uh, to students for a long time, actually, it's very difficult to get people to go dark. Um, and uh, they'll often, as you, as you just correctly said, they'll realise later that it's uh, not as dark as they thought. Yeah, right. constantly darkening my darks as well. So I'm just getting the rough, the rough shape of the darks in. Just get a little touch. 
It's terrific, actually, because uh, I can already see uh, a likeness uh, in this, just with the, uh, those uh, lines, with the charcoal, very precise. So just locking in, I'm just going to have a slightly lighter dark on the mouth, with a tiny bit of red, just to start with. Also interesting to see that you're using several different brushes. I do the same thing myself. Yeah. I mean, I tend to try and use a different brush for a new colour, uh, but it gets quite confusing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> After a while. So here, I'm just, I'm just blocking in, in just roughly at the moment, and we can, we can move that around. So I'm just blocking in some bigger shapes. Right, and then I'm just going to make a mid-tone. So I've got my dark, now I'm going to make a mid-tone. So I tend to use raw sienna, I find great for just really bulking out the paint so you can get more volume to it. And a nice uh, mid-skin tone as well. So. Yeah, uh, for skin tone I generally, my go-to is white, a bit of ochre, some vermilion and some black, ivory black. It gives a nice, nice skin tone value. Let's, have a look at that. Let's see what that's like. Ooh, it's got a little bit green. Can't help there. noticing that uh, the mild stick that you're using uh, almost uh, looks like a bit of a lethal weapon. So. <laughs> yeah, this is. Uh, it's been with me a long time. This one came out of the garden. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a uh, mum's mum's. Uh, bamboo garden plant holder uh, and I've never seen to have updated it. Uh, so she's not missing it then? No, <laughs> no. It's good to keep the models in check too. Yes, I had noticed that, uh, that Chloe has to, uh, has to move every now and then just in case. So I'm just going to block in the hair, try and get these big shapes in. So Max, we were discussing um, earlier that you've uh, you've been painting quite, for quite a long time, and I think uh, you told me that your mum bought you a painting by numbers set when you were quite small. Did you say you were about six or seven? Yeah, that's that's what started me off. So uh, My pursuit in art, uh, paint by numbers, absolutely loved it. And uh, uh, also, I was better than my brother at it. It helped. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a slightly competitive streak there, Max. Uh, <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, this portrait's coming on absolutely wonderfully now. So at the moment, the orange background, which acts as the mid-tone to the skin, uh, is just showing through a bit too... It's just a little bit too red. I wouldn't normally have it this red. So I'm going to cover the background and that will help with the tonal values. So you're going through quite a lot of brushes there. Um, any, <laughs> any preferences? Uh, yeah, well, I've got a favourite kind of brush, which is uh, uh, the Rosemary & Co brushes. I think those sort of stand out, uh, out in, the, in the crowd for quality and they last. They're very, very good brushes. Had. If you look after them, that is. <laughs> and are you good at looking after your Bruxy backs? Because a lot of artists often aren't, as we know. It's become my religion, <laughs> my, but it's my least favorite part of my job. But it has Funny to be, has to be done. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of artists will agree with me. Just get of course, uh, Rosemary's brushes are made in the UK. Yeah, up in, up in Yorkshire, I think. That's right. Well, moving on to another really quite stunning painting of Izzy with a hat standing in front of The Bathers by Sura. It's an amazing picture. I, I'm absolutely blown away. I've looked at this now several times and it's a painting of a painting of a painting, I think. But it's really unusual because, of course, you're looking at the viewer or rather the study from the back. So you can't see Izzy's face at all.
but you can see a stunningly represented picture, um, a painting, I believe, that's in the National Gallery um, by Sura, uh, a very famous painting called The Bathers. And you, you, you've even captured the frame. I mean, it really is a staggering piece of work and completely unique. That piece is, is called Observing Sura. It's one of three. And uh, yeah, I was in the National Gallery with a friend and looking at a painting and I figured, you know, why not have a painting of someone observing a painting mm. as a portrait and uh, try and describe the figures with the clothes they're wearing and the hats they've got on. Just sort of changing the, the viewpoints really. So Max, you've uh, you've blocked in an awful lot of uh, colour there now. What's uh, what's the next move? Uh, the next move, I am moving away from hog hog brushes, uh, which I find great for just laying in and uh, blocking in the colour. Because with a hog brush, you can move a lot of paint around on the canvas. Uh, so now I'm moving to a red sable brush, and this is going to capture the finer details, and I'm able to now blur these lines together and sort of lose those rough edges which are quite distracting at the moment. So I'm going to start by mixing up my colours. So obviously the sable quite a bit softer. Yeah, a lot softer. Red sable, natural brush. It really holds the paint nicely and you know, it gives a nice smooth finish. So I'm just, I'm re-knocking in my darks now. I'm just going to smooth round the face, just putting these putting these harsh edges a bit close together so you can't, you, you know, the skin's a lot smoother. And I'm using more medium now as well, uh, which gives it that added transparency. And that, that's a medium that you mix yourself, isn't it? Yeah, that is a, uh, it's a medium mix that I was taught about at Charles Cecil. And that is a quarter Canada balsam quarter stand oil and the rest turpentine it's a nice kind of it's not too thick dries nice and quickly uh, you can mix up your proportions to have a slower drying time um, but I find that mixture for me works perfectly because it will still be a bit tacky the next day but not too wet as to sort of just smudge all your paint colours together. Right, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna re-knock my darks in now just to make sure I get the colour values. So I'm just gonna hit that dark there. I'm gonna hit the dark on the other side. Just in doing this, it means the lights are really gonna start popping out the tonal values are going to be much easier to see. So just, it gives it a bit more depth as well once you start knocking these darks in. Just constantly. Yeah, adding a, adding a dark area will always uh, make the light areas look even lighter, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, but it's good to just knock in those, those darks straight away. So then it will help you find your colour tones for the rest of the face. Because if, if you then end up modelling the whole face and your darks aren't dark enough, and you darken them, it's going to put off the rest of your colour palette on the painting. So I'm just going to knock those in quite, quite roughly. Get that dark in on the eyes. So just block that shadow in. Don't have to worry about too much detail at the moment because I'm going to come in with a dark bluey white for the actual whites of the eyes and I'll blur that into this dark which will give a nice soft edge for the iris. So Max, you've, you've softened the portrait down quite a lot now. What's, uh, what's the next stage? I've now harmonised the skin tone by softening it with the sables. Uh, I think it's at a good stage now to go ahead and start putting in some of the highlights. 
I've moved on to a Dama glazed varnish, which is a really nice translucent varnishing glaze, so I can just put these in nice and lightly to start with. I'm just going to put that highlight down the cheek, and this is going to hopefully make the painting pop. <laughs> so just putting a highlight on the end of the nose. Uh, when, I'm, when putting the highlights in, I use a bit of red in there, just, to, just so it's not, it's not a solid white, uh, especially to start with. Even for the highlights in the, in the, in the irises, in the pupils, I, uh, I use a little bit of red in with the white. Yeah, just to, to, to kill off that, uh, that stark white, yeah, yeah. And as soon as you put these in, you get a life just popping out of, I find it just brings life to the painting. I'll put it in sharply and then I'll just use a little brush with a bit of black just to blur the edges. Yeah, those highlights in the eyes make absolutely all the difference to a portrait. But you don't want them too sharp. This is a very subtle blur of the edges around that. How long would a picture like this normally take? Uh, so head and shoulders like this, sort of 50 by 60, would normally take between sort of five to eight sittings of each uh, three hours, if, if the sitter can do that. Um, any larger, depends what's in the background, how long it will take, and how still the model can sit. <laughs> Chloe, great job by the way. Yes, thanks Chloe, you've been wonderful today. Well, I think we'll, uh, we'll leave you to it there, and um, uh, we'll come back to you soon. Well folks, we've had an absolutely amazing day here with Max. Max, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, you've done a wonderful job here. I think everybody will agree that uh, we've seen some fantastic techniques. And um, what more can we say? Where can we find more of Max Bacanello's work? You can find my work online uh, uh, on my website, maxbacanello.com, uh, my Instagram, at Maximilian Bacanello, and at a gallery that represents me, which is the Box Galleries on the Kings Road in London, which I'll be doing an exhibition at next year in August. Wonderful. And uh, obviously you can see more of Colour in Your Life here in the UK and Colour in Your Life in general um, online at colourinyourlife.com.au and also uh, find us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and all the other social media. And we really hope that you've enjoyed what you've seen here today. And ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, what have you got to do but put some colour in your life. Bye. <laughs>